So, welcome back to episode 5. We're picking up right where we left off, plus or minus a couple of seconds because of weird recording troubles, but that should be resolved, and oh my goodness, they actually managed to dig the tunnel. I mean, it's actually kind of impressive. I like it. I mean, it's absolutely horrifyingly atrocious aesthetically, but we can actually build a long line of apartments. And I don't believe this is connected to the main mining network, so a horde of demons probably won't be unleashed from the hidden fun stuff into our fort. But yeah, I can just feel my other Dwarf Fortress compatriots crying at the side of this because it's so horrifyingly ugly. Oh, that just reminds me of, like, one time me and my friends, we were looking at these dogs, and I was... We actually saw this one, and I go, what's that? And I go, it's a dog. He goes, well, you ugly, bro. <laughs> he was talking to the dog. Okay. So, yeah, we actually have quite a few idlers. So it would be helpful if we get it. Oh, more bedrooms. Yes, that is the thing I forgot to do last time. Hmm. So... I would actually be very interested to hear if anyone has some interesting fort or fortress stories. Like, there was this one time I was making this pretty interesting fort. I could, I'm pretty sure the main exports we had were gold products. And it was actually very lucrative. I mean, gee, I wonder, it's gold. So I built this very impressive blue tavern. I think I made it out of microline. Yeah, microline. Light blue. And there was this cinnab no, it's not cinnabar, but other red material I used. And it looked very impressive. I used like red for the pillars and the rest was blue. But everything was connected to the main night mining network. So when I accidentally cut through an adamantine tube a giant horde of demons was unleashed and I mean honest to goodness I set up emergency walls and gates and bridges but some of those demons they can just phase through that stuff like nobody's business and so oh and they broke everything down they all escaped everybody but one dwarf died so since he was the last dwarf he was elected mayor and I I actually feel really bad for this guy because all his friends are dead and suddenly he was notified in his head that he's mayor since he's the only one like one of his last thoughts were if the mayor's if everyone's dead am I mayor but he was horrified by all the deaths so he goes oh no I'm mayor and so he was going to die of thirst and I want to see if this fortress would continue because none of the demons stayed well a couple stayed but he tried to leave the tavern However, a wounded demon that couldn't move was stuck in a couple corpses of his brothers. But every time he saw the demon, he got scared and ran behind the counter. And so he eventually recovered, went out, and ran behind the cover counter over and over again until he like died of dehydration. And I still remember, I mean, <laughs> that entire time he was running, I was going, You can do it, I believe in you, little buddy. Oh, he couldn't, though. He died. I mean, he'll always be remembered in my heart. But I guess some things just weren't meant to be. So let's enable this. 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 This and this. Not that, because usually there's too much wood. This. This and this. Okay. A problem I had was I made a fortress, it was a, a logging company. I like to imagine that I was like flipping the middle finger to the elves <laughs> by chopping down all the trees and making, I was making bank. I mean, eventually the, for, the caravans were going, we'd like to take this, but our carts are too full. So I just sold bucket loads of trees. A problem I had was there was so much wood that whenever I tried to make a wood stockpile, 
nobody did anything except hauling wood. Like, the fortress was filled with the stuff. You couldn't move a couple feet without tripping over some lumber. <clears throat> and let's continue making those coins. Hmm. So far, the only products my fortress have made are aluminum. And frankly, I can ima easily imagine medieval times that they would literally cl cross oceans for aluminum. And there's that little tingle going around. You could do it, little buddy. You're a fairy. <laughs> You're a real fairy now. But I can easily imagine them cl crossing literal oceans to get to aluminum, because that stuff was expensive. I mean, Napoleon served his finest guests with aluminum platters, and lesser guests had to settle for gold. I mean, they had to settle for gold. For a metal that we consider so worthless that we use it foil out of it. Not tin, aluminum. I mean, way back when they thought tin was the worthless metal. But yeah. It's crazy how things are prat change value and worth. I mean, by Moore's Law, uh, yeah, because of Moore's Law, we can think why computers and phones are so relatively cheap. I mean, your phone can do so much nowadays, and it's only for that price. I mean, way back when, you had to pay millions of dollars to have like less than a hundredth of that capability. A hunter has been found dead and dehydrated. Oh, we... <laughs> are you... S he was not willing to go a life without alcohol. He would rather literally die than not drink alcohol. I mean, that is fantastic. <laughs> uh, but let's try to find the body. Magma crab, giant king cro cobra. Okay, that makes me nervous. Uh, dead missing. Okay, we're actually missing a herbalist too. And I can't find the body. Let's try to select the announcer. Did you get trapped up a tree? <laughs> Did you? Were you the one that? I think that's the dwarf I assigned to collecting these these spider webs so if they got trapped up a tree <laughs> oh my god of course trees are unnatural they attract lightning <laughs> what does tr attracting lightning have to do with it <laughs> it's g our god Thor smiting the unholy trees for their unnaturalness <laughs> um, giant on the playground order the stick anyone but let me see that is our hunter by name of oh sorry if you guys can't see this I am messing around with dwarf and therapist okay man you don't do much actually I mean you do hunting and literally nothing else I guess we'll survive without her but we do need to make coffins oh I remember this one for it was doing very well because I managed to safely get humongous amounts of adamantine. But they kept dying for other reasons like vampires, were beasts, cavern collapses. I wasn't digging too smartly. Uh, there was this one epidemic where they starved because some of them couldn't actually stop what they were doing to get food. So I like to imagine that the prices of coffins went up. And becoming a coffin sale like a coffin maker, was a real legitimate business. I mean, it is a legitimate business, but, you know, people who handle the dead tend not to get it very much acknowledgement. And I think this would be a lovely place for catacombs, wouldn't you? I would... I think it would be fantastic to be buried underground with... surrounded by this really cool blue stone. I think I'll give them a little more space to mourn. Mm. 
Yeah, if anyone's wondering, yeah, I'm still sick. And I'll give them a little space to stay in front of the coffin. Now, our miner is really busy smelting. I think I'll stop our miner smelting and then assign it to someone else. Okay. Mining. That is assigned. Now, who's the smelter? Uh, a vuz. So let's find a vuz. And let's get rid of the furnace operating. Apparently, our miner is actually pretty decent. Okay, let's get rid of that. Okay, looks like I'm going to have to do it manually. So, Vuz is ten, pretty, an actual decent diagnoser. Which is actually pretty cool. Good for her. So, stop smelting and get to work. I actually think we have enough. Yeah, iron, a lot of aluminum. We need bins. I'm going to make bins. <laughs> oh my god. Apparently Avuz was so busy smelting she never had time to sleep. And our cheese maker is missing. That is rather unfortunate. And I have no clue. Imagine how horrifying it would be for a dwarf and you're walking through and you suddenly see an arm sprout out from the tree. You find out they got trapped up a tree and they die. Oh no. Oh no. Our fish dissector trapped up a tree somehow. Is this the monarch butterflies doing? Do they grab the dwarves to stick them up trees? Evil tingle. We actually have alcohol, not a whole lot, but we have some. You know, that's going to be my headcanon for this fortress now. <laughs> the monarch butterfly people grab the dwarves, swoop them up inside the trees, and then they die. A horrifying way to die. And why aren't you drinking? And you don't really get attached to people. That is not the best thing. <laughs> the dog, the stray dogs attacks the stray pu puppy. No, the dog child is fighting. Well, that's kind of sad. Well, our fortress has to go on, and the one, two, three deaths won't stop me. Yeah. I've actually quit quite a few forts because people wouldn't stop dying. I mean, honestly, that's not a bad idea. If people don't stop dying, maybe that's a reason why to quit. But anyway, one time I stuck with a fort, and it turned out to be my best fort ever. I mean, I loved that thing to bits, but over half the population died, and I thought about calling it quits. But I stuck it through, and it turned out to be one of the greatest forts I ever played. So don't let losing is fun to, to, don't let losing is fun prevent you from keeping with a fort. If you work this hard and this long at a fort, then you should really keep at it, because it might turn out to be something great. And if not, you'll have a funny story out of it. It looks like. How did we get a camel? Did one of the migrants bring it? Like migrants bring their own animals, which is actually pretty neat. Oh, look at all the coins! Ooh, so much wealth. Okay, let's see the images on him. Okay, stack of five hundred orshek kulit, two hundred fifty aluminum coin, aluminum currency of orshek kulit from the year two fifty. It's, it's an exceptionally designed image of dwarves. The dwarves are laughing. This artwork is relates to a performance of the Glitter of Incense, held by the cremated abbey in Lulgolds as part of the celebration of Inks, the tenth dance performance. 
Oh, I love this game so much. It actually names its dances. It randomly generates instruments. Oh my goodness, I just love the random generation. Image of two barrels. The symbol of the cremated abbey, a dwarven civilization. So we're making legitimate coins. We are an officially recognized bank of the cremated abbey. This is actually pretty awesome. Okay, so... You know what? I want to see the exact numbers. Coin. Mm. So we have 27 coins. So we'll probably need like 73 more. Stacks. 73 stacks more. Because each stack is uh, 500 coins. So they still haven't smoothed out the bank. But we are officially recognized. And I, if I remember correctly, one of these keys is the civilization's key. Yes. The cremated abbey. Um, imports. We've imported 3,000, but we've offered nothing. We have a trade agreement. But it doesn't show me the symbol. It does show me the pe important people. Which kind of has me worried. You know what? Next episode, I'm going to spelunk some more and bring up some more information about the Cremated Abbey. And I'm also going to attach a stone sense image, or recording, of what our fortress looks like when it's not two-dimensional and boring. Well, Dwarf Fortress is never boring, but it can seem rather flat. I don't know, I just never used stone since before, and I think it might be rather interesting. So we actually have enough alcohol. But our fish dissector is still dying. Oh, he's dying. Oh, ho, ho. she or he's dying. So let me build a hospital. I think this will be a good hospital place. and hopefully the miner actually gets around to that and you see interrupted by a giant tick interrupted by a giant tick that is one of the most terrifying things I've ever heard no wonder I don't want to live in a fantasy world there are giant ticks in a fantasy world my god that sounds disgusting the giant tick is fighting. Oh my god. It actually is large enough for a dog to attack. The dog scratched the giant tick in the abdomen, chipping the chitin and bruising the muscle. A tendon has been torn. The dog misses the tick, but the giant tick retaliates by missing. The dog attacks, but the tick remains jumping away. The giant tick falls over. The giant tick misses the woodcutter. The giant, the woodcutter punches the giant tick in the left second foot with her left hand, chipping the chitin. We are talking about a monster tick, and this woodcutter, bless her soul, is brave enough to actually be strong enough to chip the chitin. I mean, this deserves, I don't know, a raise. Too bad you don't get paid. You get paid by knowing there's a lot of coins in the in the bank. Okay, let's smooth out everything here. You know, I think this is about good enough. Uh, I was hoping to save him because we need that fish. I mean, do you guys think there's going to be a lot more migrants? Because we did trade away a lot of aluminum, which means there's at least something of value here. And I'm kind of sad to say it, but a lot of beds have been freed up. So we won't have to go on a tree cutting rampage. So, let me make a couple more rooms. And I think that's enough for today. Thanks for watching. And I hope to see you next time. Have a nice day.